in today's Kim's Adventure, we go to iHeartFoba and see what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> Look who's blogging right there. All right, we're gonna go inside. Thank you, Look Who's Blogging, for that sweet introduction. As soon as we walked in, I was immediately impressed by the trendy decor. Everything felt very cozy. We were invited to attend a special presentation by the business owner Ryan, organized by our friend Huddleby. I'll leave the link to her Instagram account in the description below. Did I also mention we got some bubble swag? What a nice surprise! Ryan used to work in telecommunications for over 10 years before embarking on his boba journey. He always had a love for boba and decided to open up a franchise where he learned the ins and outs of the business. In order to be closer to his family, he and his wife moved down to Southern California from Canada. They took their franchise experience and worked on opening iHeart Boba in 2015 and had their grand opening in 2016. At that time, they offered popcorn chicken, wings, sweet potatoes, but they later removed those due to challenges. It was then replaced with Bubble Waffles, a Hong Kong favorite. Boba, also known as bubble tea or pearl tea, had its origins in Taiwan. It's a black balm made with tapioca starch and sometimes cassava root or dark brown sugar. The word itself is a local slang for... <clears throat> uh, I'll just let you guys google that one. Boba is usually mixed into milk tea which dates back as far as 618 AD during the Tang Dynasty. It's black tea mixed with butter, milk or cream. Food historians believe that the Dutch introduced the blend of milk and sugar to the tea in 1624. In 1949, Cheng Fun Shu, a Taiwanese native, invented handshaken tea made with a cocktail shaker and called it the foam tea. The exact origin of when boba was introduced to the drink is debatable, but some wise guy had the idea of adding tapioca balls sometimes in the 80s. The Taiwanese were obsessed with having slimy squishy balls rolling around in their mouths. In the early 90s, boba got introduced to the rest of Asia and by the late 90s to the world. Since then, it's become an international sensation. The hardest part of making boba is preparing the tapioca balls. They're sold dry and have to be boiled for 30 minutes and then cooled for another 30 minutes. The balls can't be too squishy, or they'll stick together, and not too hard, or they'll break your brittle teeth. There's even a word for that perfect consistency in Chinese. It's called QQ, which means chewy. Boba lives or dies by the texture of these balls. Every cup starts with a scoop of boba, followed by tea or juice, and then a whole lot of ice. There's even special cups, straws, and seals just for boba. All you have to do is viciously stab that seal with a straw, and you're ready to enjoy. After about an hour of mingling, Ryan started his presentation. He explained that the lockdowns had forced him to come up with creative business solutions. So for the last few years, he's been focusing more on catering. Not only can you pick up a drink at that Roland Heights location, you can now have them come to your event. They do everything from birthday parties, graduations, to weddings. They'll set up a bar and make everything fresh. It's just like having your very own iHeart Boba on location. For more information, visit their website. Links will be in the descriptions below. We now got started on tasting some of the items on his menu. The first one we tried was the rose gold milk tea, which has been selling very well since day one. This is really good. I've never tasted anything like it. 
I can actually taste rose in this. I can also taste rose. Ryan explained that they took rose petals and green tea and mixed them together. The next one was the Phoenix Oolong. This one's milky. This one's milky. A little bit, tastes a little bit like coffee. A little bit like coffee. I don't taste uh, any of the tea. Mm, it's good. They're all good so far. These are caffeinated drinks, and our kids are just gobbling it up. Let's see how it affects them. Now for the mango passion fruit tea. Passion fruit tea. This is their popular one. Wow. That tastes like juice. Passion fruit juice. Here, try it. He likes it. Yeah, he loves it. That's why he drank half of it. You can drink all of it if you want. The fourth drink was the white peach oolong tea, which tasted salty and creamy. Kind of feeling like eating a snack. The final drink that Ryan brought out was the marble sesame with milk. With this one, you have to remember to stir the drink. Tastes just like black sesame Korean rice cake. Really delicious. I usually get the runs after drinking all that milk, but several days in, I can say I'm scot free. There's definitely something special about these drinks. For the main course, Ryan brought out his popular bubble waffles. The Hong Kong bubble waffles, also known as egg waffles, is a seemingly cheap street food throughout the city. These snacks are crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside, making it a cookie sponge cake hybrid. Since its invention in the 1950s, the egg waffle has subtly weaved its way into becoming a strong part of the Hong Kong history and culture. It's theorized that the dish was invented when a grocery shop owner wanted to utilize his unsold eggs. The shape of the waffle was designed to mimic the shape of an egg, and back then, each bubble was sold on its own. In the 70s, Waves of immigration from mainland China created a job shortage and many turned to street hawking. Street vendors who made bubble waffles exploded and competition was fierce. Fast forward several decades and bubble waffles has gone through some major changes. Surprisingly, the person to spearhead this new wave is not from Hong Kong, but a Ukrainian entrepreneur named Oleg Sapsai. Back in 2013, he tried experimenting with the waffle and found little success. He later turned it into a cone and added ice cream. Suddenly, this new look became one of the most attractive foods in the world. Brian had explained that he went to Hong Kong for three to four months to learn how to make these bubble waffles. In his shop, they mix all the batter from scratch which is a 45-minute process. The batter then gets poured into a bubble waffle pan. Wait a few minutes, and voila! This was my first time trying these. We're now eating waffles, bubble waffles. Mm. The batters are freshly made here. This one has boba in it. Mm. And this is the uh, original. These are called bubble waffles. And it's crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. Spongy. And uh, this is furikake. Furikake waffle. Mm. Oh, the fruit cake makes it salty. It's salty and sweet. 
Mm. Little blue cup here. And Ellie wants it. It's so yummy. Eat it. Yummy, huh? Wait, wait, wait. No, yummy? Yeah. All right. I'm stuffed. Boba, waffles. I thank the host. I thank the host for this tasting event. Thank you, Ryan, for giving us the opportunity to learn about your business and sample your menu. We also had a great time meeting other online influencers. Links to their accounts will be in the descriptions below. So what do you think? Uh, what do you think about that uh, drink? Uh, muy buenas! <laughs> uh, muy buenas! Alright, this one... This is what happens when you have a lot of boba. <laughs> we gotta go bathroom real bad. <laughs> Ugh. It's locked. It's locked. Um. Anyways, thank you, Ryan, from I Heart Boba. Very tasty treats, tasty drinks, and tasty treats. Wait, nobody's in that bathroom. Okay, here, get Ellie. Me and the boys gotta go. Ah. We'll see you guys on the next Kim's adventure. And before I forget, I'd like to give a special thanks to Run For Boba, a virtual race that's focused around our favorite drink. It helps support local businesses that have been affected by the lockdowns. Finally, Bidi Bao, the bilingual board books for little Chinese learners. They were written and illustrated by two college friends, Lulu and Lacey. There are already several books in the series to choose from, along with accessories and apparel at their online store. Links for Run For Boba and Biddy Bao will be in the descriptions below. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, here's some more suggestions. And as always, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for notifications, and I'll see you on the next Kim's Adventure.